Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to the channel that is the Deb Chanel's 48th World where we do commentary okay we do reviews sometimes but mostly we just get on here chew the fat and get opinions and and circulate them and we just talk about different subjects well today we're going to be talking about homeless people and what it really means to lose your family lose your home lose everything and there's no one there to help you okay because this is what homeless looks like and it's sad to say mental illness contributes a lot to the homeless population but you know it could be fair to say the majority of us are living paycheck to paycheck and we are one step or one paycheck from being homeless or maybe two or three but it's no joke it's not it's no joke for the mental health uh community of individuals that are out there suffering and they can't hold a, a job Due to the fact of their mental illness. And uh, we got Portia Williams going out here on these streets. You know, she's a little reality star uh, from Real Housewives of Atlanta. And she's supposed to be getting married to Simon Gobadia. And we're still going to do stories on that. Because I think he is going to um, push her over the edge. Make her really, in the sense of, she talking about being homeless. She just might. She keep fooling with that man. But anyway. Homelessness is not going to be joked about or even talked lightly down about. Portia, this is what homeless looks like. Remember, all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. So, Portia, we need you to sit down, rethink your words. Because how I'm looking at you, it's almost like you're dehumanizing um, people that have failed hard on their luck. Uh, you know, they could have lost a job. Uh, they could have been high, behind on bills and, you know, the landlord. And, you co of course, you know the utility people. They don't want to hear no sob story. They don't want to hear none of that. But Portia Williams was talking about she was homeless. <laughs> I'm like, what? Yes, those were her words. And she has a new book uh, coming out that's going to explain all of that. I'm like, Portia, this is what homelessness looked like, baby. You, after you had your bad experience in your first marriage with Cordell Stewart. Um, yeah, he pretty much kicked you out of his mansion. And he kind of left you, left you destitute uh, with hardly no money. Or probably no money. No house, no cars. None of that. Okay? But, weren't you trying to do the same thing to Dennis? You were trying to take all his money or get a prenup and all this kind of stuff. And his mama like, uh-uh, no way, no way, no way. Sign prenup. Because you get, you getting whatever you put in after you come in. You ain't getting nothing. What well, we started together, me and my son. And then, I'm like Kim Kardashian. Not Kim Kardashian, I'm sorry. Kim Zosia. Yeah, she was telling you just to sit down and look pretty when she was on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Because she was making absolutely no sense. Okay, so I kind of put that where Ken was trying to check Cynthia about her nonsense and her non-valid points she was making on the show when they were filming. And they kind of got into it. It brought us back to, Portia, when you had such a dumb moment when you thought it really was a train underground that you could actually sit in and uh, try to... Uh, what do you call it? Uh, go back in time and relive that whole struggle uh, of slaves trying to run away from their slave masters. And they are having, you know, Caucasian people, uh, Eastern Euro Euro <coughs> European people helping them to, to escape, putting their life and their family at risk as well. Portia, you know, we, we gave you a pass because we like, and we really shouldn't have gave you a pass because you had Jose Williams. And I didn't include his uh, picture in this video because it, it, it would just have been a disservice to him. Okay, for her not to know anything about her, her race and her culture and how things were back and done to us in slavery or where our ancestors. But Portia actually thought it was a train. <coughs> waiting to take people or slaves to freedom I don't know if she thought it, I think it was filmed in Atlanta <laughs> maybe she was looking for the Underground Railroad here in Atlanta I can't remember but it, it played in uh, on the Real Housewives of Atlanta can't remember what season but if you're an avid follower uh, and looker at the show of Real Housewives of Atlanta you know 
You remember this episode. I mean, she got him being pro-black, Black Lives Matter, did that in the third, and then she going over there stealing somebody's husband. That's what they say, Portia. I don't know if you stole the woman's husband, because I really feel when in relationships, you can't be taken from nobody if they don't want to be taken. So half of that was, well, I guess he wanted to go, and I guess she was ready to get rid of him, meaning Simon, Simon Gabadia and Fallon. Okay, Fallon only had a brief, brief stink on the show. Um, didn't get a peach or anything of that nature, but I don't know. She keep, you know, being married and, and things of that nature. And if the one she's, uh, hooking up with and having a baby with, uh, which he was deemed the assistant or somebody of Gabadia, um, or maybe it was Fallon's fa- Fallon's assistant. I'm not really sure. I didn't really get into it because I wasn't really into that season. I think it was season 13 or 12. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, Portia. The Underground Railroad was an escape place or uh, a resting place for them so they can get to the next uh, part of their tour. Uh, honey, it was just a network of routes and places and people that were helping slaves. You know, sometimes they hid in churches and got fed in churches while they were making a transition. Sometimes they was in barns, you know, uh, being held out from, you know, the slave owners. Uh, and like I said, they had European people helping them. Because uh, they knew slavery was wrong. Some of them knew. Majority of them knew slavery was wrong back in the day. And they wanted their uh, servants to be able to live their life. So they had to hide out in these caves. They had to wait until somebody was coming to provide safe passage for them to their next destination of freedom. Okay, so, you know. <sighs> and and P- Portia kind of apologized. I'm like, that's no excuse. Her mother, Diane. Uh, must have married into the Williams family. That's what I'm thinking. And that's how she became a Williams. Or maybe she never was uh, married. I don't know. But I think Portia did say she got divorced. But evidently it probably was her dad's side. Not her mom's side. Because I'm like, Portia, where were you in school? Where were you in your family genealogy? Where they taught you these things. You should have been like right up there front line telling people about slavery and you know, everything Jim Crow, everything your uh, grandfather taught you, Jose Williams, because he was right in the thick of it. He was right in there with Martin Luther King, marching side by side, the civil rights movement, girl. So I wasn't surprised when, you know, Kim Zosiak had taught you, girl. Well, she didn't tell you. She told Cynthia to uh, sit down and look pretty. And pretty much that's what we're telling you, Portia, to sit down, look pretty, and stop making these false allegations. When it comes to you talking about you being homeless. Now we know you're trying to promote that book. The Pursuit of Happiness. And you have a spinoff coming with um, Bravo TV. Where they're going to give you um, your segment. Similar to Kim Zosiak's uh, segment she had with Hardy with the Party. They're going to give you your own spinoff. And you're going to let us have a glimpse of what you were going through. Going through and the preparations of your um wedding that you're supposed to be having with Simon Gabadia. Now the streets are talking that he 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 just gonna use you Portia. Because he didn't have this kind of come up. And he's not gonna let you leave uh allegedly from the Real Housewives of Atlanta because that gives him too much notoriety in his neck of the woods, in his country. Because at one time he wasn't invited to none of these high elite type uh balls and galas and um we call it um dinners and um just hanging out with the uh who's who in the nigerian world or wherever country he's from he didn't have that notoriety until he met you got with you with all the social media buzz and and the uh, platform of a show you're on you know and quite naturally you might not get it all because you kind of slow in that department just like you thought you know i don't know what you would think i guess you thought uh gladys knight and the pips down uh were down there in the underground railroad you were searching for you know uh that midnight train to georgia you probably thought it really was a midnight train to georgia (laughs) but it was more of a metaphorically um representation and not an actual literally account portion the underground railroad is what i'm talking about Oh, child, but, you know, we we forgave you. We forgave you because, um, 
we liked it, you Porsche. We did. We still like you. But sometimes we have to tap your hand when you act all silly and, and willy-nilly. And we just can't take it no more. Because we can't really take up for you. Because the stuff that you say that come out your mouth just really, really, really don't make sense. But I was appalled when I had heard that you had called yourself calling yourself homeless. I said, what? What is Porsche talking about? What, what do you mean she homeless? Because when she got divorced from that nut um, of a husband, she went to her mama's house. And her mama's house was very nice. Okay? Very nice house. And she in, also ended up um, moving her mom out of her master bedroom in her house. Which I was like, what? Why would I, I would never move out of my master bedroom? We could share the room, but we, you know, but I guess they were doing it for the uh, aesthetics of filming, and they wanted Portia to have a more suitable, you know, uh, living arrangement. Did like she was living high on a hog or something, and yeah, I was like, what? So you going to compare yourself to these people that we just? had seen uh or me showing you through the video this that's what homeless look like that's what homeless look like homeless don't look like having to go over to your mother's house who has maybe a two two or three story home very elegant very well uh the decor is on point uh and then you you saying some foolishness about you were homeless i mean you had shelter you had food you had clothing uh you had all the utilities the internet to be posting on social media talking about your husband or your ex-husband but then you're gonna come with this mess of talking about you were homeless i'm like what what is portia what kind of nonsense is portia williams got going on now and i, I really was disturbed because like i said we, we keep giving you passes portia that's the scene when she found out that the uh, underground railroad was a uh, metaphorically type uh, symbolism of what we were doing back there in slavery or our ancestors were doing back there in slavery trying to uh, run for their freedom okay and uh, I don't know Portia just masters everything when it comes to beauty and I really do believe she has a good heart but her intellectual it's just not there at times and I don't know if it will ever be there because she concentrates on more of the who who would what's what and maybe that's all she'll ever be as a Barbie doll you know uh, in the black version but I don't know guys should we give a Portia a pass on time out she was homeless I, I, I don't know I don't know if we should let that one go or should we just constantly just talk about it okay and until she gets somebody video that she would look at uh and see that's not all about the money it's not all about putting a book out there and you're trying to talk about your struggle no baby you ain't never struggled your mama was out there doing her thing hustling or got her own business i, I don't know what it was but even in your baby pictures and things you showed us of your youth you weren't struggling you knew nothing about homelessness Come on, Portia. But anyway, we can go on and I can go on and talk for days dragging Portia because she needs to be dragged in all aspects. Homelessness looks like that. You're, you're unkept. You don't have the facilities to uh, groom yourself properly. You don't have a home to uh, keep you from the bare elements that are outside uh, and all the environmental issues that are there. Uh, making your health uh, not be one of a good uh, what do you call it healthy one or healthy environment to be in uh, you don't have food all the time you don't have any money you have uh, the clothing is, is pretty much what you got on your back and depending on when and where you can go to the shelter and, and you know clean yourself up you know do is there a washing machine there I mean it's, it's so much Portia so much and you lived in the lap of luxury from birth and you've been doing well ever since you got on the real housewives of atlanta i mean you married well even though you said you was a trophy wife to um the foot ex football player uh cordell stewart and you know uh, what's his name dennis was an entrepreneur he has a hot dog 
kingdom he's been billing around there that your daughter is going to have some access to uh, whenever she gets old enough to know about business ventures and things of that nature but you weren't homeless Portia you weren't homeless okay but anyway we go to shadow and act uh, shadow and act.com is where I'm getting my commentary from that I'm going to be presenting right now um, the journalist that brought up this and wrote up this piece was named Brenda Alexander. She put it out on September 15th and she goes in to title her piece uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta Portia Williams, ah, Portia Williams talks about being homeless while starring on the Real Housewives of Atlanta or, or starring on the show and new memoir. Okay, I mean, in the book, she's going to be publishing and telling us nothing but lies. Because if you're going to start out talking about you homeless and you living in that, you're not living in that type of environment where you didn't lose your family, you didn't lose your home, you, you, you didn't lose anything, Portia, come on. Because like I said, if it was all uh, Cordell Stewart and he treated you like a trophy wife, you knew what was coming up. You know what you 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 know what you were getting into, but you want to have that lap of luxury, that NFL, and everything that it details, and what it brings forth for us, fame and fortune, <laughs> and hanging around the elites. That's what you wanted, and that's what you pretty much got, and and then song for the negative. And remember, all things work good together for them that love the Lord. So I have to like speak my mind on this portion, because homeless homelessness is a real thing out there. And don't nobody in their right minds want to wake up one day and say, I want to be homeless. That just don't come to mind. We work too hard out there to even have that be a conversation. Okay. So, going on into this article, it says, A lot has changed since Portia Williams fans first met the Atlanta Peach on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. When Williams joined the franchise in Season 5, she was the proud trophy wife of former NFL star Cordell Stewart. By the end of the se season, Stewart filed for divorce. Days after, he was a no-show at the reunion special. Okay? The cracks in their marriage were evident to viewers and co-stars. In the following seasons, um, fans watched as Williams tried fighting for her marriage, despite her claim that Cordell Stewart blindsided her by filing for divorce while they were still living in the same house. Williams walked away from the divorce with nothing and determined... Uh, to rebuild her life, which she has. She's now a fan favorite on the show, has a successful radio and television hosting career, is a mother to a daughter, and is newly engaged. Now, when we say newly engaged, I guess she was trying to mess with Dennis, but that's not the case anymore. And she is no longer on Dish Nation. I don't know if she really quit or they gave her a hiatus type deal, <laughs> but how she was saying on her social media platform that she was no longer going to be with them and she's going to be doing other uh, adventures okay uh, uh, taking in other uh, what do you call it streamline of income where she's basic basically it's going to still be an entrepreneur but doing other things okay not in this article just my uh, sidebar going back to the article it says but there has been bumps in the road including physical fights beefs with co-stars how her parents divorced impacted her battles with depression and suicidal ideation and more and Williams is revealing all in her forthcoming memoir or book, The Pursuit of Portia. It's an introduction to the book. Williams explains why she's ready to bear it all, saying she hasn't had the chance to do so with an hour of television each week. After starring uh, on uh, season after season on The Real Housewives of Atlanta, I felt there was still so much I never got a chance to say in those confessionals, okay, or never got a chance to express at the reunions between throwing shade and receipts she writes in her excerpt so i've opened up my life here page by page to share my truth my strength and my pursuit of the real portia in the book williams op opens by recalling being at bravo event just two weeks after stewart filed for divorce and the microscope she was under she also touched on her childhood family dynamics and show scandals okay she doesn't take her success for granted admitting in the intro of the book, I went from being homeless while starring on The Real Housewives of Atlanta to owning two successful businesses. The book is now available for pre-order and will be released in November. And you can read the first chapter uh, on that particular uh, article I'm reading from. I'm trying to click to see 
what they gonna give us nah i can't go through all this i can't go through all of this okay no i can't do it because she she wants you to register instead of just giving us the excerpt you know she 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 doing too much doing too much y'all but she's on the worthypublishing.com again that's worthypublishing.com if you want to go and try to read an excerpt of what we could expect from her book that would be on sale in november uh 16th they say uh it's categorized on the non-fictional biograph biographic biography and autobiography rich and famous okay and she sells it for uh 15.99 in the united states and in canada it's 19.99 okay so yeah uh, the proof the pursuit of portia how i grew into my power and my purpose by portia williams okay now we also know yes lord uh she had somebody to help her because she, she's just a troubling spirit at times the way she expresses herself especially with this whole debacklement of the underground railroad and how she thought it really was one and uh we still had it parked up uh in the back underground for anybody to catch a ride and get that feel of how it was back there when they you know our ancestors trying to you know um <laughs> ride the pony express i guess child oh lord to the promised land y'all i don't know what what got into porsche i really really don't know and we don't really want to know we just want her to get get it together when she put out stuff put out the right words put out the right um um what do you call it the right ambiance, i guess uh giving us an idea of what she's really talking about and she could have said she had a hard life uh transitioning from being married and being a trophy wife to becoming a self-made woman she could have instantly did it like that and i would have been there for i was like okay girl i see what you're saying but not putting out there that she was homeless no portia was nowhere near homeless she needed to stop it before she may become homeless yeah i'm like cat williams when i heard that i was like ooh, jumping jacking Jehoshaphat, what is the heck is going on? Okay, what kind of twiddly dee, twiddly dumb thing is going on in Portia? Hey, honey, it's your bipolar, Lord. It's your bipolar. Whew, which I would have to give her a pass if that was her diagnosis of her health. But if she not, and she just speaking out the, the top of her head, she need to sit down. We need Portia to sit down. We don't need her to write no books. We don't need. Well, she don't wrote one, so we either partake in it and, and and go get us a copy and read it. I don't think I'll be trying to get no book on Portia, cause Portia just she just sometimes <laughs> she just sometimes and I ain't got time to read her struggles she thinks she had. But it's her truth. Let her speak it. I can't go against it, cause you know I have my truth. I have my perspectives of things and you know can't nobody deter me from that either but lord just peace and blessings for miss portia it's portia williams honey because lord cordell has sent her on a tailspin she can't seem to get it right in the um relationship department okay seems like she even went from worse to worse to worse okay and then you got two men <coughs> that are friends and still treating you like you know you the uh porn star or, or i don't know what they, they see you as the sex kitten um uh, and i'm talking about court not court that's it, but uh, uh dennis and uh gabadi are over there they friends and they sharing the same woman i i can't i can't make it make sense lord make it make sense but y'all get down in them comments y'all tell me what y'all thought about this video and P uh portia williams calling herself destitute and homeless I can't with her, Laura. I can't with Portia. Not at, not on this video. I can't agree with her. I totally disagree. I totally think she needs to come back and retract her statement. Because it's almost like you're dehumanizing the whole idea of people being homeless. People don't want to be homeless. Not the ones that are go-getters. Have always worked their, you know, throughout their lifetime. And it's just one setback you can have. You can have a big illness. Can't pay the uh, hospital bills. And, you know, you have to give up your house, give up your cars just to make ends meet. And then that uh, don't even come together um, when you're hit with a situation with illness and you have to lose your job and this, that, and the third. 
or like the situation we got going on with the COVID out here. You know, people are instead of losing their jobs um, because of the fear of catching it. And uh, as you know, you can get both shots and still be a carrier. So it, it's, it's all up in the air. Everybody everywhere in their minds about this issue with the COVID. And um, well, I just, my prayers go out to everybody. Everybody and anybody on the highways and the byways. Take care of yourself. Wear your mask. Get vaccinated, don't get vaccinated, but wear your mask, okay? When you're being around people that you're not really sure of, as well as you're being around people because you want to still come and go as you please, okay? Do yourself a favor, do yourself a uh, family a favor, and wear your mask, okay? But that's all I got for this video, guys, and I will see y'all next video. Ta-ta!